All of his classmates have passed away and just memories remain. Great speaking opera master Mei Lanfang recalled, during the reigns of Emperor Tongzhi and Guangxu, all students of opera in Beijing learned both Peking opera and Kunqiu. After 1900, however, they learned Peking opera only. In the early years of the 20th century, China was experiencing great social turmoil. By that time, Kunqiu had long ceased to be the dominant form on stage. In fact, there was not one professional Kuinchu opera troupe in the whole of Beijing. The stage was now completely dominated by Peking opera. Inside the Suzhou Kuinchu Museum, we can learn about what remained of Kuinchu in the early 20th century. By that time, even Suzhou, the birthplace of Kuinchu, was no hive of Kuinchu activity. Just four troops were still in business in the city, Zhuanfu, Dajiang, Daya and Hongfu, and they were having a difficult time of it. The leading performer of the Zhuanfu troupe was Shan Yuechuan, but to make a living, he and his colleagues had to tour from place to place in Jiangsu and Zhejiang provinces. In the end, however, all this effort proved futile, and in 1923, Zhuanfu, the last troop still active, disbanded. The long history of Kuanchu in Suzhou had come to an end, leaving the exquisite stage costumes to gather dust in abandoned wardrobes. The disbanding of Suzhou's last Quinchu troupe in 1923 apparently marked the end of Quinchu opera. The world was changing fast and there was no place for Quinchu opera in it. And yet the Quinchu tradition survived. This was thanks largely to a group of educated people who strove to preserve it by establishing a Quinchu workshop. In 2006, famous Taiwan writer Bai Xianyong brought his young people's version of the Peony Pavilion to Peking University. It was an unheard of event, a traditional Kuanchu drama being staged in a university. Yet students packed the theatre, creating a scene that otherwise existed only in memory. In 1917, a number of new faces appeared among the staff of Peking University, and many of them would later become famous. Among these newcomers was Chen Du Xiao, an established scholar in humanities, Li Da Zhao, a professor of economics and the curator of the university's library, Professor Hu Shi in humanities, and Zhou Zuoren, a notable figure in the field of library systems. But as famous as these four would be, their arrival was quiet compared to that of Professor of Opera Wu Mei from Suzhou. Zhou Zuoren, who arrived in the same year as Wu Mei, recalled with some amusement how Wu Mei made his debut at the university. He said, Wu Mei was the first professor of opera the university had ever employed, and his arrival caused a sensation in Shanghai newspapers. To them, including opera in the university's curriculum was inconceivable. Wu Mei had a very peculiar way of lecturing. He would hold a flute in his hand, stroll into the classroom and sing Kuan Chu tunes to the students. Wu Mei told his students that what he was singing was quite different from Peking opera, which was so very popular in the city at the time. It was Kuan Chu. Uh 
，这正是感谢他们的远见卓识。还有一点非常好好玩的一点呢。就是他的传下来的过程当中，还是一直保持着受到高层文化人的支持，一直保持着。我们井上贝先生。In October 2006, world-famous architect and Suzhou native E. O. Mingpei returned to his hometown for the inauguration of Suzhou Museum, which he designed. The newly completed museum was not far from Zhong Wangfu, the former residence of the Prince of Zhong, and Zhuojiang Garden, and it was very close to Eo Mingpei's family temple, Shuzhiling Garden. Every member of Eo Mingpei's family was good at singing kunchu. His uncle, Bei Jinmei, was known as a versatile kunchu performer who could sing well and play musical instruments. The kunchu workshop referred to earlier was established by Bei Jinmei, Zhang Zedong, and Xu Jingqing, another master kunchu singer, and the three pulled 1,000 silver dollars for the purpose. Little could they know that this act, seemingly accidental, would save Kuen Chu from extinction. Eighty years ago, in the northwest of Suzhou, on a street called Tao Hua Wu, there was a private garden named Wu Mu that enjoyed a fine reputation. But today, aside from dedicated Kuen Chu fans, few know it ever existed. The garden was Bei Jinmei's private property, and it became the venue for the Kun Chu workshop. This is the layout of the garden as drawn by Ni Chuan Yu, a Kuen Chu artist from the Chuan generation. Shoffee When the workshop's name board was affixed above the entrance in 1921, many juveniles turned up to try their luck. Shen Yuchuan, an old performer with the Chuan Fu troupe, examined each of the contenders, and from them, he picked around 40. As they learned their Kuen Chu skills, they could never have imagined that the tragic fate that would befall the older generation teaching them would mean that they would be entrusted with preserving a great heritage. Due to financial problems, before long the workshop found itself unable to continue. Chul had studied in universities in Chicago, Wisconsin, and Illinois, and after he returned, he had thrown himself into the manufacturing industry to help fulfill the dream of salvaging the nation from its backward state. Earlier, a cotton yarn tycoon in Shanghai had sponsored five students from Peking University to study abroad. As one of the first to receive this Western education, Mu Ou Chul came to the conclusion that the new culture was a way to salvage the nation. 
But despite this, he was still interested in traditional art forms and often made trips to Suzhou to learn Kunchu from Yu Sulu, a Kunchu master. Learning of the financial difficulties the workshop suffered, Mu took it over and began bringing it back to life. So, that is to say, Chuan Zhibei teacher's training, he actually is a creative or a writer. That is to say, from the music system. 来推出，所以就是说，当这个关系很没落的时候，因为有这个文人的传统，文人出来还是坚持去保护他，文人懂得他的这个文化上的这种意义，那那么所以就就是我们就培养了一代的传志辈老师，那么这个是很重要，否则的话，我们今天就起,起码就是舞台上的关系就看不到了。Neither Bei Jinmei nor Mu Ouzhu was able to give any thought to the question of the future lives of the students. At the time, it simply wasn't possible. But in any event, Kuen Chu was still active as an art form, and with the financial problems solved, for the moment at least, the workshop was able to continue. Yeah. 大这这大一点，嗯，我们叫他大学生，啊，他们叫小生，分行的，啊，呃，都是淡绝的戏，他也教，啊，我我是上老生，我的老师叫吴医生，他教的老生以后啊，还要教老旦，老旦戏也要教，老师啊，就很辛苦的。Now, just imagine the scene. It's 100 years ago, and inside the Wumu Garden in Suzhou, a couple of opera masters are teaching their students the lyrics and tunes. But outside the garden wall, unbeknown to the students, China is experiencing massive change. Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers, and tune in again next time when we'll bring you more about the history and development of Quenchu Opera. I'm Xi Xiaojun from CCTV International. See you next time.